explore issues related to the Free Britney movement. The Free Britney movement is advocating for the end of Britney Spears' conservatorship. But a functioning woman that's been working non-stop, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. I'm so excited to share this with you today. Ever since I posted my Halloween latex looks back in October of last year, everyone has been going crazy over my Britney Spears look. So I thought today I would break it down step by step and show you how I get from this to that. And also in honor of the Free Britney movement, I thought what better time than now than to show you my transformation. As always, links to all the products I show you will be in the description box down below. Some of them may or may not be affiliate links. Depends if I can find the correct links or not, but everything you need to know to find the catsuit or the wig, anything like that will be in the description box down below. But for now, let's get straight on into it and start with the transformation. <laughs> now anyone who may not be aware already, if so, how? Free Britney is essentially a movement to free Britney Spears from her conservatorship. It's been going on for far too long and all the evidence points to the fact that Britney does not need this and it is essentially just her family, mainly her father, using her and controlling her life. So I will have links to a few like things down below if you want to go check out more information but I am fully in support of Free Britney. I feel like she is a complete icon especially for anyone in my generation. I grew up watching Britney Spears music videos. I went to the show and got like Britney Spears show bags. I had a little Britney Spears pin that I used to put on all my clothes. I have been a stan since I was about five years old. So I thought why not today break down my Britney Spears look and show you exactly how I get from this to that. Whether you want to recreate this for Halloween, a costume party, maybe it's just for Instagram, or maybe you just want to show your support and get all dressed up in your living room, then by all means, go ahead. It's a lot of fun and I would 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, first things first, I'm just adding two braids to my hair. Even though my hair is blonde, I am going to be wearing a wig for this look. I feel like my hair, I got my roots are too dark and also the fact that I'm going to be showing you how to do this with a wig, I think it's going to be more useful because that way anyone, no matter what your hair type or hair color is or length, you can still recreate the same look. My hair also isn't quite long enough to get that full Britney Spears glam moment, so the wig it is. I'll come back when I am all braided up. So having braids is going to mean that when I put my wig cap on, everything looks nice and smooth and it also helps to keep my hair out of my face while I'm doing my makeup which is why I started off with the hair. I'm actually going to start with my eyes today so I have this Smashbox eyeshadow primer. I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger and just dab it into both my eyelids, blend that out and then I'm going to come back and do the eyeshadow. If you don't have an eyeshadow primer, then don't worry. You can just use a concealer or not worry, but it is gonna just help the eyeshadow stand out a bit more, especially since we're going for such a pale baby blue. Now this Jeffree Star palette is the one I'm going to use to create the look because it has this, because of this shade here, which is the perfect baby blue. Of course, you can use any blue eyeshadow that you have, but this is what I'm gonna be using today. I'm also going to be taking my James Charles palette and just using a little bit of the white at first underneath just to really make it pop. Okay, so taking a fluffy brush and the white pigment, I'm just going to go and put this all over my eyelid. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be going over it with the blue, but this should just help to make the color look as pale as possible. Okay, so white eyeshadow is on. It really doesn't make a huge difference, but I do like to do it anyway. Now going in with my blue and that same brush because you really just want the blue over your whole eyeshadow. That's the best thing about creating like a 2000s look is it's not very technically difficult as far as makeup application. Generally speaking, the 2000s looks were just one eyeshadow color, often baby blue, maybe a little bit of eyeliner, some mascara, and if you were really crazy, some rhinestones, but there was not too much blending or cut creases or crazy eyeliner tricks going on. So much easier to replicate. 
I'm just gonna keep going in with this blue until I feel like it is pigmented enough. And then of course we can clean up the edges afterwards. So don't worry too much if you start looking kind of powdery and crazy. Okay, I actually ended up going in with this shade down here, which is called Cancelled. It's a little bit of a brighter blue. And I feel like especially for an on-camera look, it just helps to make the blue pop. If you're going more for in-person, I think this is actually closer to being accurate but this is just gonna look better for this video and for my TikToks, which I am filming quite a few of. So if you're not already following me over on TikTok, I will have my account linked down in the description box. I'm currently changing the name, so it should be Maddie in MBD soon, so Maddie in Montevideo. Now they also have a second account called The Latex Goddess, so if you wanna go follow it there, I post a lot less often over there, but it is purely latex content, including some transformations into my PVC Britney Spears queen. <laughs> okay, so then if you have a makeup wipe, you can just take that to brush off any excess. Honestly, mine doesn't look that bad now that the fallout has all faded away and I can cover up the rest of this with concealer. So let's move on to foundation. Okay, moving on to concealer. I realized I put this on without even filming. That's what happens when you film three videos at once, but here goes my concealer. I also have a bit more on than I needed, but when I'm filming, I tend to go a bit overboard with foundation because even though it might look crazy in real life and a bit cake-faced, it does usually show up nicely on camera. So keep that in mind. Go lighter if you want this to look good in person, if you're going to a costume party or something, but if you're just taking photos or videos for social media, then go as hard as you like. Okay, and once this is all blended in, I'm gonna go in with my foundation. This is just by MAC. I was saying for the TikTok that I would prefer to be using a cruelty-free one. I'll put some options of foundations I used to use up on the screen, but living here in Uruguay, you just cannot find so many of these brands, pretty much anything, and this is the best I can do quality-wise. So I'm just gonna have to make do for the meantime. I just blend this in with a sponge and apply it everywhere else. Once the liquid is all blended in, I'm going to go in with a powder. Ideally, I'd be using a translucent powder right now, but my local Mac store is always sold out, so I'm going to be double layering the foundation, which can look really cakey in person. But again, for film, it turns out well. So this is in the shade N15, this one, and this is B69. I tend to switch between them. This one works a lot better when I'm fake tanned, but currently this is my natural pale state. So I'm gonna go for my very pale, <laughs> pale, pale foundation. So I'll just take on a big fluffy brush and pat it in under my eyes to help keep the concealer in place and stop everything from creasing or moving. I then just go all in and lightly powder the rest of my face. Just to make sure everything is blended. And all my spots are covered. Okay, so now that the base is all on, I'm gonna take a little bit of blush and just apply it to my cheeks. Now this is the blush I'm using, it's by Tarte. It comes in this little set. I don't really use the eyeshadow shades, but I love the blush. It's also the only one I have with me, so it's the one I use all the time. Now, Brittany had a lot of blush and it was quite low on her cheeks. The current trend is to put blush a lot higher, but if we're going for Brittany's 2000s look, you really want to have it a bit lower on the face. It's like classic, like apple, apple of your cheek kind of a look, but put a lot of layers. You want a lot of blush. I also like to put it on my nose, but honestly, you don't want to do too much. This isn't like a TikTok ego look this is this is 2000s glam and 2000s are not about blushing the nose i always go back and blend with the powder brush just one more time so that everything looks a little bit more natural now let's move on to some eyeliner from checking my reference photos it looks like she has a little bit of eyeliner on so i'm going in with a pencil which normally i would not do but again, this is the 2000s, so we're not doing any liquid eyeliner today. I'm just gonna add a little bit of like a black 
pencil on the right on my lash line and a little bit underneath my lower lash line as well just to darken up the look a little bit and then i'm going to go in with a little bit more blue eyeshadow underneath my eyes when i'm done okay so i did like the tiniest little wing ever i'm going to go ahead and do this eye then just make sure that they're both even Okay, and that is about it for makeup. I just put a little bit of mascara on. Normally, if I was doing a look like this, I would definitely add fake lashes. But again, I'm trying to keep it actually accurate. And the 2000s were kind of a short lashes era. Finishing off with some lipstick. This is just L'Oreal. Again, not my usual preferred brand, but we're doing what we can. This is just the shade 800. So you want something that's fairly light neutral but a little bit pinky i'm essentially going for a my lips but better color and this does the job okay so the wig cap is all on just try to make sure that all the baby hairs are tucked up inside nothing is peeking out if you were planning on wearing this for a long period of time you could of course do the professional way glue it all down trim off the excess and all of that but i tend to just wear them for photo shoot videos that kind of thing or even if i was going out to a costume party and didn't want to have glue on my face in the morning this works just fine it's got plenty of clips at the back so you can adjust it i always have it on the tightest setting i'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then we can style it There we go. Wiggle it down into place. You can also go ahead and grab the little clip, like the little slides, and just make sure they're going underneath the wig cap or, you know, sticking through it again if you're doing it the professional way. Make sure the wig is as secure as possible. Brush through it. And then comes the tricky part. Okay, once the hair is all brushed out, you wanna grab a large section on either side at the front. Also make sure you have a scrunchie or a big hair clip handy to tie up the rest of the hair. So what we want is about, yeah, quite a decent chunk, especially since I'm using a wig. If you're doing this with your natural hair, you'll probably need to grab less so that you don't look, you know, bald at the end. I guess I have about, so almost two inches on either side. That may or may not be too much, but I'm gonna start with that. And then, yeah, okay. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the hair out. And then I'm just gonna use a scrunchie to tie it off. And then taking just a regular hair tie. We're going to tie these in a ponytail at the back of my head. Okay, so this is the hardest part about making it look natural is because of the ears, but you know, we're gonna do the best we can. You can choose if you wanna go over your ears or go behind them, but then you risk having a little bit of like, sideburns poking through. So I tend to just cover the tops of my ears because again, I'm not taking this too crazily serious. Resecuring the volume pin. Ta da! <laughs> Just some aggressive brushing, and then it'll be finally time to put on the outfit. Now this is my catsuit from Honor UK. The final step in the transformation, of course, is going to be the outfit. I feel like this is the perfect, perfect Britney Spears catsuit. It's got the high neck and everything, the gorgeous bright red shade, the shiny PVC. The only difference that I can see just from like pictures is that this one definitely is more of a skinny leg, whereas Britney's is more of a wide leg. <laughs> the calves, but you can definitely get away with using this one to create that same look and 
Ana UK is amazing for having very affordable pieces, especially in their PVC. So I'll have this linked down below. I do also potentially still have a discount code with them, which I will have down below. It was just Maddie Luca or Maddie Luca 10. It'll be in the description box as well as an affiliate link. So if you're going to shop from the website, shop through that link. It's not going to charge you anymore, but it's going to let the website know that you came from my video and it really helps me out in working with them again in the future. So I'd love to hear in the comments below actually if there's any other characters you'd like me to recreate or any costumes you'd like to see me try on. Comment down below and I can add it to my list of video ideas. But for now, let's get zipped up into the cat suit. And that is the final look. Got my little boots on and everything. Originally when I did this outfit, I wore this catsuit with some red stilettos, which I personally think looks better. But the Britney Spears video clip for Oops I Did It Again had black boots. So that's what I put on today. And I also feel like everyone owns a pair of black boots, so that is much more easily accessible. I love this catsuit. It's definitely not an everyday outfit, which is why I love to dress it up like this because it gives me an excuse to put it on. I will also know that there are no accessories because there were no obvious accessories in the photos I saw or in the video. If anything, I'll just put some little like gold studs. I don't even have any nail polish on because the all, <laughs> the bright red shiny onesie, one piece, catsuit, unitard, whatever you want to call it, really does not need accessorizing. Of course, there's your little black boots. If you were wearing this out and about, you could take a little black handbag. I feel like it would match in perfectly, but otherwise, so yeah, that is the finished look. Insert little Britney Spears montage moment. <laughs> day-to-day -day personal life then be sure to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok because that is where I post most often. I post on both my Instagram and my TikTok multiple times every day so those are really the two places to follow me if you want to make sure you don't miss out. My TikTok is currently not the username. I will have the current URL down below but I'm about to change it in like two weeks time when I am allowed to on the app. So if you're watching this in like two weeks time the username is Maddie in MVD, so in Montevideo, but currently it's that Aussie in Uruguay. So now that is all cleared up, thank you for watching. Comment below if you would like to see me recreate next. I have my next celebrity look already planned out, but after that, please get your suggestions in now. Even as far as Halloween looks go, I know it's only July and Halloween seems a while away, but if I'm going to be making anything myself, or getting any kind of like latex custom made. That takes a lot of time. So get your suggestions in now and there'll be plenty of time to get those videos planned, filmed, edited, and uploaded before Halloween. 
Love you all, and I'll see you next week with a brand new video. Bye. <laughs>